How do you show an image of a map and have clickable points on that map in NativeScript? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to have clickable areas on an image and we're starting right now. Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new here, please subscribe to this channel and you'll get NativeScript tips, tricks, and tutorials, which we do here a couple of times a week. We cover everything from NativeScript Core to NativeScript View and NativeScript Angular. So if you look through the library of videos here, you'll see some good quality content that myself and some other folks are creating for you. You can also tweet at me, I'm at Digitalix, where you can ask me NativeScript related questions, just like Adam asked. And he says, I could not find a way of making hotspots on an image. I want some part of an image clickable. So that's what we're doing today. Now, we already did part one, where we get the location of the tap on an image. If you haven't seen that yet, check that out. So this is part two. I'll link to part one down below and up here. And we're gonna continue from that point on. Now, instead of a cute puppy, we're gonna be using an actual map because this is a more useful example. So we're gonna present an image of a map and then have different points on it that are clickable. Now, as I've said in the previous tutorial, there is a few different ways of doing this. One way is to have an image and then overlay buttons on top of the image and then handle button clicks on each one of those buttons. And yeah, while you could do it that way, of course, you're gonna have some extra overhead because you're gonna be creating a layout to hold the image and to hold all those buttons. And you're gonna be laying out all those buttons and creating the extra views in your UI hierarchy which you can avoid doing by using this technique that I'm about to show you. So grab a coffee and let's do this. This is where we left off in the last video. If you haven't seen that, check that out. Basically, I have an image of a puppy here and on the console, I can tap on different points of this image and get the X and Y coordinates printed out here. Sorry, puppy, we're gonna opt for a more realistic example. I went ahead and added this map.png file into my app that's right over here. So now we're gonna have a map and we're gonna have these points on the map. Let's say you want it to have a little effect when a user taps on a point, you want it to display a pop-up or some details about that point. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually vertically align this image. So I'm gonna add the vertical alignment property here. I'm gonna set that to top. That way our image sticks to the top and this corner right here is gonna be zero, zero. Your image might be anywhere in the page and you're gonna to have to calculate based on where your image is, what the offset of these taps are. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and click on each one of these. And let's say we're gonna start with this coffee cup one. I'm gonna get these values, these X and Y coordinates for every one of those things. And I'm gonna save them off and just write them down. And I'm gonna create some data structures to hold these values data structures that I can reference later. First, I need a way to track my geometry. So I'm gonna create a geometry.ts helper file here, and we're actually gonna use a rectangle. So I'm gonna create a class called rect, and this is very similar to rectangles in iOS and Android, but we're just doing our own little JavaScript implementation. So we're gonna have a public origin, that's the X and Y coordinates, and that's gonna be a point type. Notice that point got automatically imported from TNS Core Modules UI page page, that's fine. Actually, it's coming from a different place. It's coming from TNS Core Modules UI core view, but it's being exposed in page page also. I'm going to import it this way, of course, if you're using native script 6.2 or higher you can do at native script core and then ui core view that'll work as well but i'm just going to leave it the old way so there's our starting point we also need the size which is going to be a size type that's also going to be imported from view so point is just x and y coordinates if i navigate there you'll see that x is a number and y is a number and size is just a width and a height. When we create an instance of a rectangle, we're gonna take in X as a number, Y as a number, width and height, they're all numbers. And then we're just gonna set the local instances of origin to be X and Y that we pass in, and this dot size, oh, I need an equal sign here, and this dot size will be, of course, width and height. 
And that's the basic rectangle that we're going to need. We are going to add a couple of other functions here to do some calculations a little bit later. The next helper we're going to have is a link. So link is going to represent the actual tappable areas that we're going to need. So we're going to export an interface here and uh, that's going to be a link item. We're going to give it an ID of string and we're also going to give it a rectangle of type rect that gets automatically imported from geometry. So these are the link items that are going to be here. So this is a link item, this little coffee cup icon, this restaurant icon is another link item. So when I store those values, those X and Y coordinates, I'm going to create an array of link items here and just store them. This can be coming from a service or in my case, for the demo purposes, I'm just going to keep it in my code behind file here. So I'm going to create map points, which is going to be a link item array. An example of one will be ID, and I'm just going to make up these names, Cafe Olay, and this is going to be a rectangle. Now I can create a new rectangle here if I have the X, Y coordinates for the origin and the height and width, but I don't have that. I can, of course, open this up in a graphics program and figure that out, but I want an easy way of doing this. So I'm just going to take this tap. I'm going to tap pretty close to the middle of this icon here. I'm going to get those values, those X and Y coordinates, and I'm just going to figure out an approximate tap area rectangle around this icon. You can be as precise as you want here, but I'm just going to guesstimate and I'm going to say that this is going to be a 40 by 40 rectangle or a square, and I'm going to extrapolate and calculate calculate based on the x y coordinates of the center point of that. So instead of using uh, a new function, instead of constructing a new rectangle, I'm going to create a new function here that's going to calculate that for us. It's going to be a static function. It's going to be from point and I'm going to provide a point here or I don't even need to provide a point. I can just provide X and Y coordinates so I don't have to import point into my main page there. So X and Y will be numbers. And also I'm going to pass in the length of one of the sides. I know it's going to be a square. So all I need is just one side to figure out that rectangle. And I'm going to return a rectangle here. So this is going to be const new rectangle. I need X, which is going to be the X that I pass in, but I want to subtract side divided by two here. Oh, I need to give this constant name. Let's give it a name rect. Okay, so side divided by two, because this is going to be the origin point. So I want to calculate from where I tapped in the middle, half of the side and up this way towards the zero zero point, which is going to be right here, zero zero relative to that click area. X is going to be X minus side divided by two and Y is going to be Y minus side divided by two. And of course, width and height are just going to be side and side. That's going to give me my rectangle. So I'm going to return that. And now here in main page, I can say rect dot from point and pass in that point that I got by tapping here. So let's see, I tap on this cafe au lait, I get 66, 189. So I'm going to pass in 66, 189 here and the side is going to be 40. So that's going to give me one of those icons. I went ahead and did this for all of those icons on the map and I'm going to paste that in here. There's five of them and I just gave them random strange names, Cafe Ole, Haleo, Ristorante Uno, Burgers R Us and Kebabs. And those are their locations. Now that I have this map data, now our job is pretty simple. We can go here to the on tap function where I tap on one of those items. Here's where we figure out the X and Y coordinates on iOS and Android. We did this in the last video. So I'm just going to save off that into a constant called point X and Y. And then I'm just going to iterate through my links. So let I equals zero. I'm going to create a little loop here. I is less than links or uh, map points, I call them dot length plus plus I. Did you know that you could do that in JavaScript, by the way, instead of I plus plus, you can do plus plus I it does the same thing. Const li, we're going to save off uh, our map point, which is going to be the first link here. All right. And then we need to check to see if this point that we tapped with the X and Y coordinates is inside of the rectangle of that link. Well, how do we do that? I'm going to go back here to my geometry and I'm going to add another static function here on our rectangle. 
And I'm not going to bore you with the math here with me typing it all out. I'm going to paste in this function. So here is the function that we need is point inside rectangle. We take in a point, we take in the rectangle and then we return a Boolean. So here we figure out the rectangle's origin. We do a min and max calculation to normalize those to X and Y coordinates. And then we check to see if that point is inside of that rectangle. So we're going to use that function right here. If rect dot is point inside and we pass in the point that we've just calculated and then li, which is our map point, has a rectangle on it. So we're going to pass that right in there. If that's the case, we're going to save off our matched link. So I'm going to create a new variable here called matched link, which is of type link item. That's going to be undefined for now until we get here that means we've matched it so i'm gonna say match link equals li and if we matched one of them that's all we need so i'm gonna break out of this loop and then we found it or we may have found it if we didn't tap on it then this will be actually null or undefined still so here i'm gonna say if we did in fact find match link then i'm just gonna alert but you can do whatever you want here so i'm gonna alert match link dot id all right, and uh, let's take a look at that. So here we are. I'm going to tap on any of these areas that don't have an icon and nothing happens. But if I tap on one of these icons, we have kebabs. This should be Cafe Ole. I'm going to tap on that Cafe Ole. This one is a burger joint. So it says Burgers Are Us. And then we have two other restaurants up here. So Burgers Are Us, Cafe Ole, and kebabs. You get the idea. So this way, instead of having labels or buttons positioned and invisible on top of these, you just have an array of data and you're not creating new views in your view hierarchy, potentially saving you a lot of recalculations if you need to ever animate this or move this somewhere else. All those folks that subscribed and are commenting on a regular basis, I just want to say thank you. When I started this channel, I thought, okay, I'll put up a couple of videos and some of the older videos from three years ago about NativeScript have gotten really popular. And I thought, hey, this year I'm gonna make a change. I'm gonna continue this channel and I'm gonna make regular videos with tutorials that are gonna be helping people. So thanks a lot for subscribing and for helping me out to continue doing this. If you're subscribing and you're leaving comments, that means I know that you're enjoying this content and you're engaged and it encouraged me to keep doing more of these videos. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe. And if you do have any native script related questions, you can comment down below or send me a tweet. I'm on Twitter at Digitalix and I will see you in the next video. Happy native scripting.